So far we have covered motion in one dimension, but if you see most real life situations, the motion happens in two or three dimensions. So take the example of a fighter plane, it is moving in three dimension, or for that matter, you take a submarine underwater. Again, its movement is in three dimension. And consider a runner on an Olympic track, it's moving in two dimensions. So if you imagine a little more about various situations in that you encounter in life, you would see that the motion is in two or three dimension. Now, to study the physics of such a motion, what we will do is, we'll start with understanding of something called a position vector. So to understand that, let's imagine a point object on an xy plane. So let's say there's a point object at point x1, y1 at time t1. So its position can be described by a position vector, which is a vector that connects a reference point and most of the time we consider origin as a reference point to the point. So let's draw the position vector of this point. It would look something like this. So this would be your position vector and let's let's call this vector R1 or the position vector of the point object at time T1. And then let's say at time T2, the point reaches another coordinate, which is let's say X2, Y2. So it's reached over here and its coordinates are at time t2 are x2 y2 so we can say its new position can be described by another position vector which is this and let's call this vector r2 so let's go ahead and write vector r1 and r2 in i and j notation so your vector r1 would be written as x1 i plus y1 j and vector r2 can be written as x2 i plus y2 j and your motion in one dimension the displacement vector is given as the final position minus the initial position so that's exactly what we'll do in two and three dimension motion as well its displacement or the displacement vector can be written as the difference of r2 and r1 so let's denote the displacement vector by delta r and this would equal vector r2 which is a final position vector minus the initial position vector and therefore this equals x2 minus x1 i plus y2 minus y1 j and if you remember your vectors well the displacement vector delta r can be shown like this this is your displacement vector delta r now let's say the particle moved between time t1 and t2 like this let's say this was the motion so you you would see that the position is attaining various position vectors at various points of time. So we can draw these position vectors at different times. They would look something like this, 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 and so on and so forth. Having understood the position vector and the displacement vector in two dimension, it's, it's, we could extend the same logic to the position vector in three dimension. The only difference would be that you would add the k component as well which would be the third dimension of motion so you can write position vector as r1 is equal to if it is moving in three dimension that is as r1 is equal to x1 i plus y1 j plus z1 k and likewise you could write vector r2 as equal to x2 i plus y2 j plus z3 k and in that case uh, if these are the two positions of a of a point then the delta r or its displacement in three dimension can be written as x2 minus x1 i plus y2 minus y1 j plus z2 minus z1 
times vector k which is equal to your vector r2 minus vector r1 or the displacement vector when the particle moves from position r1 to position r2 so let's take a, an example have a particle uh, which has an initial position vector as r1 is equal to minus 2i plus 4j plus 3k and let us say after some time its position vector r2 is equal to minus i plus 2j plus 6k so we would say that its displacement delta r between these two times is equal to r2 minus r1 which is nothing but final position minus initial position which equals minus 2 minus minus 1 i plus 4 minus 2 j plus 3 minus 6 k which equals minus i plus 2 j minus 3 k so this is the displacement vector when the point moves from position vector r1 to r2 and this is in three dimension and you can find the magnitude of this displacement vector in the usual way by taking the square root of some of the squares of x y and z components so let's take another example in which the trajectory of a spider moving up a wall is a function of time so that its x coordinates is described as x is equal to minus t square plus 2t plus 6 and its y coordinate is described as a function of t as minus 2t square minus 4t plus 8. So we can say that the position vector of such a spider is given by the position vector is equal to xt because x is a function of t times i plus y t times j and therefore vector r or position vector of the spider is equal to minus t square plus 2t plus 6 times i plus minus 2t square minus 4t plus 8 times j. Now, if you are asked what is the position of the spider at t equal to 1 second, what we'll do is substitute the value of t as 1 second and get the position vector r and that's what we'll do. So, r at t equal to 1 second would equal this and this if you simplify equals 7i plus 2j likewise if you are asked to find the position of the spider at t equal to 2 seconds you will substitute t is equal to 2 seconds and get the position vector r2 as and i'm putting the answer directly it will be 6i minus 8j and now if you are as what is the displacement of the spider between time t equal to 1 second and t equal to 2 seconds you will simply say that delta r or the displacement vector is equal to the final position minus the initial position which here would be vector r2 minus position vector r1 and if you subtract and simplify what you get is minus i minus 10 j so let's try to put the position of the spider at various points of time and see what its trajectory would be and what the position vectors would be. So if you plot the trajectory of this spider on a x, y axis, and here's your spider. What you'll find is that its position is at t equal to 1 seconds it's this at t equal to 2 seconds it's this 
and this is at t equal to 3 seconds and its position at t equal to 4 seconds is this at t equal to 5 seconds and t equal to 6 seconds and finally its coordinate at t equal to 7 seconds is this so you see we can draw uh, various position vectors at various points of time so at time t equal to 1 second the position vector is this start from the origin and we draw a vector like this at t equal to 2 seconds its position has changed and the position vector is this and at t equal to 3 seconds the position vector is this all originating from the origin and then you have another position vector again another position vector this is a position vector at t equal to 6 seconds and then finally the position vector at t equal to 7 seconds and let me put an arrow also to make them look like a proper vector here it is and now you can find the displacement vector by subtracting any two position vector to find the displacement between any two uh, so if you ask to find what is the displacement between time t equal to four seconds and time t equal to six seconds we'll say that the position vector at time t equal to four seconds is this and let us label it as r4 and at time t equal to six seconds the displacement vector is this let's label it r6 and therefore the displacement vector would be the vector connecting this point to this point which would therefore be this is your displacement vector and it would be in this direction and to find this what you would do is and let's call this delta r and this delta r would equal vector r6 minus vector r4 which is nothing but final position which is at time t equal to 6 seconds minus the initial position which is position at time t equal to 4 seconds.